This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Uniquely Feminine, Fertility to Menopause with Dr. Stephanie Pina on Wednesday, December 9th at 7.30 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio waiting to take your phone calls on any aspect of natural and integrative therapeutics that you can think of. Perhaps you've had a problem and you know what, you've done everything you can. You've tried, you've applied, you've done all those things you can come up with or somebody suggested, but you still come up with the same old thing. It doesn't work. Well, here's an opportunity. Let's see if we can get something to work for you. That's why we're here. That's why we do this program. Call me, 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. We have a subject today, one that I think will be very interesting, and one that will be the subject of our in-house continuing education program this Wednesday evening, the 9th of September, 7.30 p.m., and you're all invited. What's the subject? What are we talking about? What are we going to kind of coerce you to come in and listen to see if you can help yourself? Well, it's a subject that is kind of based on women's transitions, if you will. You know, in the Western civilization, we we put up with things, women put up with things that they don't do anyplace else in the, on the planet. But you know, we go through these transitions. What am I talking about? Hormone transitions. But this time we're talking about perimenopause and menopause and things of that. And you can go into it early and you can go into it late. You can get into your 30s and do it and 40s and do it. And, and some women go to their late 50s and 60s before. But the symptom process out of control is the same. From you can't get this weight that's uh, kind of, you know, building around parts of your body that you don't want to show. You look better in clothes. Uh, mood swings, you're kind of up and down like a yo-yo. Uh, your energy has gone. It's, you know, you're kind of not working the way you'd like to. Dry hair and skin, you're, you know, you're, you, but this time of the year, particularly Christmas and, you know, winter time and so forth, it's like your skin looks like it belongs to a tarantula out in, in Arizona. Hot flashes, night sweats, I call them your personal summers. And then, of course, depression and anxiety. All of those things have to do with your hormones not working the way they're supposed to. In studio, and your host, your presenter, your your leader this Wednesday evening, and we're going to talk about this, Dr. Stephanie Pina, Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine, and we're going to explore this topic intimately today and encourage you that if this is something you want to find out more about, this Wednesday night is the place for you to be at the Rizal Center for Healing in Fairfax, and we'll tell you how to make that happen in just a second. Dr. Stephanie, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me back. Well, it's always good. We can talk about anything. You know, we can get into all kinds of things. But this this program is the one that you're going to be doing Wednesday night is critical. It's important. And it's one that, unfortunately, I've traveled worldwide and in Asia and even in Europe and so forth. And we don't see it manifest like it does here in this country. Women have severe, severe problems with hormone transition from body composition, bone loss, mental acuity problems, fatigue, energy. Walk us through that. Why, is it, why does it happen here in this country, in Western civilization, Canada included, more so than it does anyplace else? Well, I think it's interesting. And, and even if you take it further back to, you know, menstruation and fertility years going all the way through in our goals, and I think one, we're, we're always set on a deadline. Um, things have to happen according to our life schedule, and we like that to happen that way. So if menopause is going to happen, why wouldn't it happen right now? And unfortunately, that tends to make uh, any female issue like menopause, fertility, perimenopause into a disease. 
And unfortunately, we have to remember that it's a natural process, but how do we make it easier for us to go through that process it starts way beyond when we think we're starting to become menopausal, when we think there's more hormonal change going on. And unfortunately, so much is, is basically done after the fact when those symptoms start to to appear that we're now playing catch up the whole time. And we see this with a lot with different types of chronic diseases as well, too. But especially, I think, with women's medicine, there's not as much information out there um, compared to medicine that was, you know, well, basically male based. Um, and yes, then absolutely. <laughs> I guess that's the way to say it, right? Well, it is. I mean, all the most of the medical studies, you know, especially about heart disease are, are based off of men. Um, even looking at our vitamin levels and stuff like that, that's based off of a 150 pound Yes. Male. So, I mean, it's... 154 pounds. 154 pounds? Oh, they moved it. <laughs> <laughs> we are gaining weight as a society. So, you know, maybe we're 154 yes. pounds. Um, so I think there's not been enough focus. And when women, and speaking for myself as well, when we go to the doctors, the OBGYNs, or the primary care physician, that conversation tends to be so short and we just go straight to medications to deal with those symptoms that we don't really understand where everything's coming from. Well, we're a symptom-based medical society, period. I mean, that's, you know, you go to the doc, take these two pills and call me in the morning type of attitude. There's a lot of them out there that are that are in what we call functional medicine protocols that understand that the body works in systems. But this is a particular situation. Here we have women going through a natural process. It's It's supposed to happen. I mean, you go from... A, a young little girl going into womanhood and you start menstruating and hormones start kicking in and so forth and there's a reason for that and you go through your life and everything should be cool and we shouldn't be having the problems of you know bad periods and and you know cramping and all the things the headaches and the emotional swings that go along with it shouldn't happen that's not the way it's meant to be then you go through the perimenopause stage the stage where we're getting ready to terminate that menstrual flow because we're no longer at the place in life that we're going to have children and bear children, then that takes place, and that should be an easy transition. As I said, it doesn't happen here, and we end up going to our docs, and we have the symptoms that I talked about when I opened the show from physically not being who we should be and loss of muscle mass and loss of bone density and uh, the body breaking down and the emotional pieces and the hot flashes and all of those things. And we go to the doc and they say, here, take this pill and call me next week or whatever. And that's not the case. So in the transitionary uh, process, again, what is it about our society? Why do we do that here and other places in the world don't? I think, like I said, the control of a process, more so than letting it flow naturally. You know, we talk in Chinese medicine about balance about yin and yang, letting things kind of happen and being one with nature. And, you know, you see this in different societies as well, too. But here it's it's about taking care of what we have to deal with now, moving on to the next thing. And so I think the way that medicine has always taught women's medicine is now it's time to give birth. Now it's time to stop. And we've got a medication that's going to help you with that. And unfortunately, those medications also have their own side effects that lead to other healthcare issues as well, too, which we've talked on the show numerous times about. And so that's what we need to educate women more about. Why are we transitioning the way we are and how can we help them to transition and understand their bodies more so than just getting something done and moving on to the next stage? You know, the biggest problem that we have is the misunderstanding that, you know, everything in our environment is meant to be the way it is. And unfortunately, it's not because... You know, we've manipulated and altered and changed and shifted everything from our diet to the way we run our brains, to the things that we're exposed to, to the cell phones that we're around, to the lack of exercise. We go from our house to the car and so forth. And all of these things where in Europe or in Asia, you know, we look at foods that are very different. We look at activity styles that are very different. We look at mindsets that are very different. We sit and we watch television at night and get all jacked up because of the talking heads and all the things that are happening, and that has an effect. It has a, a phenomenal effect. We look at things from, in our practice, structural chemical emotional, injury patterns, uh, diet or exposures, and stress patterns. More importantly, I think in this conversation that we're having, those things have a tremendous application. Absolutely. And, and understanding what you can and can't do about that is going to be a key because a lot of times we don't know where the starting factor is. We don't know where to start with that. We just figure we're going to have to take what we're giving and go on. Or sometimes it's, it's in our genetics. You know, if my mom went through this horrible menopausal 
symptoms, I, I'm bound to do it too. So I'm just going to start early or it, you know, even things like into breast cancer as well too. We, we have this fear factor of what's going on, but so we don't take care of ourselves till we have to do it. You know, let's, let's talk about, you started touching upon the, the breast cancer issue and so forth. And that's part of the hormonal paradigm that we're talking about. And I know that you're going to cover it, uh, this Wednesday evening when, when you go through the process. And by the way, I want everybody to know that this Wednesday evening, December 9th, uh, the program Uniquely Female is the last in-house program we will have this year. And we won't have another one now until January 2016. So uh, if you've been putting it off, don't. <laughs> Make sure that you, you show up and uh, Dr. Pina will be there and answer any of your questions on this subject or anything else. All you have to do to attend that program is call our office at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And tell my staff that you'd like to be there. We don't require anything except for reservation and we need to know how many of you will be with us and i promise you those of you who heard dr pina speak before at our ageless health seminar at other seminars in the office know that this is like a treasure chest of information you need to be there and you know listen and the information you're going to go home with is going to be phenomenal so call us 703-698-7117 let's talk about that uh that lead-in that you did with uh you know breast problems, cancers, lumps and bumps and cystic cystic breasts and so forth. Those are hormonal patterns. And we talk about something called, you know, estrogen that is not balanced or, you know, not being opposed properly by other hormones. Why do we see so much of that? What's going on with that? I mean, we can set aside for a minute the genetic typing of the BRCA markers and so forth, but in this particular situation, these are environmental things that, that sneak up on us and, and cause these things. Yeah, we get exposed to a lot more estrogens from outside, whether it's plastics, whether it's the food we're eating and the antibiotics and, and the, everything that's in the foods, uh, if it's not organic. We get exposed to it way more than we used to. And so when you talk about the rise of breast cancer, the different types of breast cancer that you're seeing now and how the age factor is getting younger and younger and they're getting much more aggressive, that exposure to different hormones is is not balanced. And also when you look at the type of lifestyle that we're doing where we're on the go all the time, we're not exercising, we have more weight. Remember, hormones get trapped in the body. They need to be processed and metabolized just like medication is. But hormones especially like to hang out in fat cells, so we're not active. We basically have that cell going, mm, look, there's extra estrogen around. How do I respond to this? And that's going to create dynamic changes that we need to do something about. So where we were much more active, you know, even 100 years ago, you didn't, you don't see breast cancer studies from then. You don't see the same kind of issues. Did cancer still exist then? Yes. And does it exist every single day? We're constantly turning over. But why is it now that it keeps accumulating is because our exposures and what we're doing. It's environmental, it's lifestyle, it's habitual, it's all of those things that we have full control over. And, you know, the unfortunate thing, we see women come into our practice and they have all of these issues that are showing up. And my doctor just told me I have. I mean, within the last, literally the last 90 days, I've had two women that, uh, that have come in as new patients with stage four breast cancer. And, you know, they've been treated and, you know, we don't treat cancer in our uh, uh, as a primary situation in our practice, although we're, we support it, we support the body, we do what we can to help them as they make other decisions in their lives and there's other contexts that we make and we refer people out to. But here, here's the situation. What I want people to understand is that estrogen-dominant problems are not necessarily something that has to do with uh, too much estrogen, although that's a part of it, and it's environmental stimulated estrogens because of all the xenoestrogens that you just mentioned and talked about. But it's also the inability of the body to raise enough progesterone to buffer the estrogens that are coming in. And when a woman goes through menopause, one the, the primary area that, that produces enough progesterone is the adrenal cortex, the outer shell of the adrenal glands. And because of our lifestyles, because of the constant stress, because of the emotional stress, the dietary stresses and so forth, that fight-flight mechanism is being beat up. Subsequently, the progesterone level is not balanced properly, and now you have this estrogen that's sitting in there, and we got a problem. And there's, you know, there's nutritional sources and so forth and so on. And I know this Wednesday evening, the 9th of December, you're going to get into a lot of the intimacies of this. We're coming up to a break, and we're talking about uniquely feminine with probably one of the brightest people that I know and I'm very fortunate to have in my practice, Dr. Stephanie Pina, Dr. Naturopathic Medicine. 
Don't go away. We're going to cover this much more in-depthly when we come back. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Uniquely Feminine, Fertility to Menopause with Dr. Stephanie Pina on Wednesday, December 9th at 7.30 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Indeed, I'm in studio. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. We're talking about uniquely feminine from fertility to menopause. You know, all the transitionary steps that a woman goes through, this is an opportunity because, unfortunately, in Western civilization, we don't do it easily. We do it with lumps and bumps and screaming along the way and... It's not okay. You know, young girls, instead of just starting menstrual cycles and, you know, developing as they should over time, they go into these weird hormonal cra- – it just used to be guys. You know, you get a young kid. He doesn't know who he is anymore. It's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. But, unfortunately, young ladies are doing the same thing now. And uh, we're going to talk about that, why the mood changes and what that's all about. But this Wednesday evening, December the 9th at the Brazil Center for Healing in Fairfax, Dr. Stephanie Pina will be your host, your presenter, and the subject is uniquely feminine from fertility to menopause and everything in between. So if you'd like to have the answers and what you can do, this is an opportunity. You're suffering from osteoporosis, you got your own personal night sweats, you have uh, somebody in your family, a young girl that's having problems developing or perhaps haven't started a menstrual cycle and should be. Uh, all those things are tied into hormonal patterns and we'll have some answers for you and what to do and what steps to take. Call the office at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Dr. Stephanie Pino will be your presenter. She's a doctor of naturopathic medicine, and she can show you how to do this the right way without limping along the lines. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the emotional piece. And I don't want to get into it in depth, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a finger pointing type of situation. You know, women go into these processes of sometimes sitting there watching television at a commercial and crying, you know, or something happening, getting upset and they explode or they, you know, whatever. They're all part of the same thing. It's, it, women's hormones seem to be much more delicate, if you will, if I can use that expression, than men. And I'll use that now, but the truth of it is, if you ask me the question when I do uniquely male, men are just as bad. They just hide it. So anyway, that's the question, too. Yeah, there's always a nice picture, and I always put it in my slide. I ought to have whoever does uniquely mail put it onto theirs, where it has a control button, control panel, and there's one button for men, and there's a whole bunch of buttons for women. And I don't necessarily <laughs> know if I want to agree with that, but that's the way it's projected. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think when it comes... Men are just in denial. No. no. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I think I think when it comes to emotions, and we we've seen this over and over, no matter what we talk about. I mean, it plays such a key part of it, and we're so focused on the physical symptoms that the emotions don't get discussed that much. And especially for women, I mean, we're emotional beings. We want to express ourselves. If we're mothers, we're caring. We want to put ourselves out there. We want to take care of others. And so those little triggers like the puppy commercials and stuff sometimes trigger us in a good way. So it's not always bad, Dr. Rizal. It can be a good thing. Um, but, you know, when we can't control those because hormones are going back and forth, because stressors are part of what's also being produced in the adrenal glands and our response to cortisol, we don't have as much of that control sometimes and they can bounce pretty quickly. And that can be even more frustrating. So it's like a cascade effect that basically you don't know why you're getting upset one way or the other. And so that makes you more upset. And then what do you do about it? So that makes you more accepted as well. So 
what I find is interesting about that is working individually with each person to kind of figure out how they've dealt with things in the past. So there, it's not always just at going and blaming estrogen and testosterone and progesterone sources, but what other things are affecting the body. And I think during that time, because the transitions can be so erratic, we don't know what symptoms going to come up next. That creates the emotional piece to come forward more so than sometimes even the, the physical pieces. Well, you talk about men having one button to control, right? I I grew up with parents that were both hairdressers. So my father was a sole male in a salon of five other women that were were stylists. And that's what their customer base was, right? So I saw the end product of – never mind, I won't go there. Um, Autoimmune conditions relative to uh, hormone imbalance – Let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, we see so much of this. And I said environmental earlier. I said that, you know, women are exposed to Western society and subsequently we have an imbalance in estrogens. So I want to get back into it in the second half of the program. But briefly, you know, how much, you know, how much of this exposure, this environmental stuff has to direct influence on all of this nonsense? I think there's a lot of exposures in that and a, and a lot of different conditions like um, working with someone who had lupus before. I know that what's interesting with that is where you tend to see a lot of these autoimmune conditions come up in females. It happens around these transition periods. They tend to be timelines when things start to flare up. So younger on, earlier on, basically you start to see things like rheumatoid arthritis coming up for uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, lupus start to happen during those first few years and teenage years where you, and young into the young twenties when all of a sudden things start to change. And then when menopause starts to come around and perimenopause, you start to see more interactions with thyroid disease coming up. Um, the exposures are, are big and it's interesting that it happens during these transitional periods where there are switches and flows and different things are happening and different stresses are happening in our life during those times too. And this creates an, an autoimmune response, which we've all f- often referred to as an inflammatory barrier that doesn't allow hormones to communicate the way they should to the cell tissues within the body. And that's part of it. This, if we go, keep going back to this inflammatory pattern that's triggered by injury in the body and biochemistry and, and emotional stress. And we're going to talk about that, and we have calls on the line, 888 Give us a call. We'll talk to you, and we'll answer your questions. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We'll be right back. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Roselle here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Roselle Live as you do every Sunday at 12 noon if you're on the Eastern Seaboard. And if you're not, subtract the hours or add them because we know we're, listen- we're being listened to all over the country. 888-630-9625, that's how you find us here. My guest in studio, we're talking about a very important subject, and what are we talking about? We're talking about uniquely female problems from fertility to menopause, the transitionary states that all women go through, but unfortunately in Western society, there are way too many lumps and bumps along the path, and not a good thing. Dr. Stephanie is a doctor of naturopathic medicine and really understands this intimately. The area that we want to just touch on a little bit is the fertility problem. You know, we're, we're a society that spends so much time in telling women not to get pregnant, and then when they want to get pregnant, they can't. And, you know, they're shutting the system down. The energetics are off. Uh, their exposures to all this environmental stuff, we're talking about estrogenic exposures, so there's way too much estrogen compared to their own body's ability to, to deal with it from a progesterone balance point of view. 
And so women now can get pregnant. You couple that with guys today, men who are in their early 30s have the sperm count of men who were in their 60s in the 1950s. So impregnation becomes a little bit more of a challenge. And you combine the two and you've got, you got a problem. Before we go to that, Dr. Stephanie, we've got a couple calls. I want to take one and because she's been very patient. Kelly, how can I help you? Thank you for calling. Hi. Uh, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. I have been diagnosed with osteoporosis for many years. Um, I'm 59 years old, almost 60, and I've been on a low-dose estrogen patch for over about 10 years. My bone density measures were negative 2.7 and were holding steady for several years, and recently I had another bone density done, and it actually has dropped to negative 3.1, yeah, not despite the fact that over the last two years I've really intensified my exercise. Um, I know to limit caffeine and carbonated drinks, and um, I'm careful about my diet, and I'm at a loss as, as to what else to do. All right, let me ask you a couple quick questions, and it's one that we probably could spend a long time on, but are you taking any medications? Only that patch. Okay, have you, which is you know it's a different situation as well, have you, uh, have you had any surgeries over the years? Have you had no. any partial hysterectomies or anything no. of that? Okay. Uh, w did you grow up where? Where'd you grow up? Uh, in Texas and Mexico, primarily. Okay. Exposed to any chemicals, any radiation that you're aware of? Uh, did you grow up in a place where there's high levels of environmental pollutions of any sort? Um, not, not well. Um, I was no, not really. Not, not that I can really pinpoint. Um, I do have fillings, mercury fillings in my mouth. That's that's the next question I was going to ask you because mm -hmm. here's here's one of the primary movers when it comes to bone density is you know first of all it's the, it's the balances of hormones that are in the body and that can be stress related that can be environmental exposures that uh, but it also can be toxic reactions and it can be mercury it can be arsenic it can be lead it can be particularly lead exposures are going to uh, deplete the system, but these inflammatory walls that we talked about earlier are enough to stop the transport of any of the minerals, but including that. If, you're, if your system is shifted acidic, then your body has to protect you. How it protects you is by taking your calcium, dumping it into the bloodstream to neutralize it. But for you to go all the way down to minus three something in bone density, you're at a tremendous risk for fracture. So you have to take a look at all of those pieces and to see what's there. You've got to find out if there's subtle levels of toxic metals in your body. You have to look if the intestinal system can absorb. A permeable intestinal tract is one of the primary culprits. If you're not breaking things down so you can use them, so you can absorb them, if the protein levels aren't adequate, then none of anything that you do is not going to work. It's destined to failure. Then you add it to medications, which are supposed to help you, but the problem is that they actually reverse the process and they make it worse because they, you know, they cause the bone to stay in position, but it's more of a brittle type of situation. There's a lot more that I need to, to know, but I know from my heart that you can be helped. Uh, what I would encourage you to do, you're in Alexandria. If you have the opportunity, join us this Wednesday evening, and we'll take the time and ask you some more questions and see if we can point you in a direction that may be useful to you. But my feeling is is that there's some environmental things, there's some history there that is producing a lot of this. So, uh, Kelly, that's what, that's what I would uh, recommend to begin with. Let's see if we can you know, kind of point you in the right direction. If you want to talk to me directly before that, go to drtomrosell.com. That's D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E.com, and uh, I'll get back to you. But uh, join us this Wednesday evening. Dr. Pina, uh, we have several calls. I want to get to the lines, but let's talk about the fertility piece of this because that, you're an expert in that area, and this is something that you, know, that you see on a regular basis. What shuts down? I mentioned a few things, but really what stops women in today's world from uh, getting pregnant? Are they going too long or is it just hormone imbalances, exposures? Is it their mate that is not able to impregnate them? What is it? Well, what's interesting now is you're starting to see some of these statistics about the causes for infertility start to change. It used to be 70% is got to be female factors and 30% male, and now it's almost 50-50. So the one thing is, as I always stressed, when I have a couple come in, it's not just about treating her, it's about treating them. And they're the ones that are trying to get pregnant, not just her. 
And the main thing that I think is happening is that we're under that chemical control for so long to not get pregnant that when we do try to get pregnant and we go to places like the IVF fertility centers, especially when we don't know what's it's an unknown cause, what happens is we put people back on chemicals again. So basically now we're trying to super stimulate a system that we basically suppressed for so long. Well, all that up and down regulation has a lot to do with stress. So mentally, you know, mentally, biochemically, mind, body, everything, it's all putting way too much stress on a body that's now not prepared to hold and, and hold on to a pregnancy. So you can do procedures that may not take because there's physical things going on, but I think it has to do with the fact that the body is just not in a situation where it actually wants to have that pregnancy. It doesn't want to go through. It's too much under stress. And when we're in a fight-flight situation, being pregnant is not going to keep you alive. Uh, no, not really. And, you know, I tell patients often, I said, I'd liken it to this because I'll have patients come in and you and I will co-treat with patients. And I tell them, look, your uterus, your body is very much like a garden. And you're going to, you know, you you prepare the, uh, the garden and you make the furrows and you plant the seeds and so forth. But if the soil is too acidic, the, it's not going to grow. The same thing with the body. If the body is too acidic, then you're not going to be able to shift in a hormonal balance that is appropriate to uh, first get pregnant, second to carry the pregnancy through. And we see that repetitively, and you said with guys today. But it has so much to do, particularly living in the Washington metropolitan area as we do, there's, there's this craziness that we live in, the society that is push, 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 and, you know, we're being bombarded constantly. Everybody gets upset. We're living in a world of, uh, of turmoil. And, you know, you add that to the sugar sodas, coffee, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten, additives, preser- preservatives, GMO products that mess up the body completely. And now you try to get pregnant and you try to carry a pregnancy su- uh, successfully if you can. And it's, it doesn't happen. But as you said, the, the, uh, playing field is very different today than it's ever been. And I know you're going to get into it this Wednesday night. Fertility is a problem, and women are waiting longer. They're waiting till they're 40 to get pregnant because they have to play in the man's world. They're they're up there, and, and I don't say that disrespectfully, ladies. Please understand that. Uh, you know, you're beyond capable, much better than most most uh, guys are playing in their own world. The point of it is, is that you go, there's a nature of things. There is a yin and there's a yang. There is a woman and there's a man. There's a positive and there's a negative. And we have to respect that to be able to maximize the hormonal influences that we have. So when we're bombarded by these environmental estrogenics and we don't have the buffering system, the body now shifts to acidity. And when there's acid, nothing can happen. Just like in the garden, it's not going to grow. I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to ask you a couple of specific questions. Lynn, thank you for calling. Appreciate your phone call. Hi, uh, good afternoon. I was inquiring about the necessity for CoQ10. I am aware you need it if you're an older, particularly as you get older. What form of CoQ10 would be best, in your opinion? And just generally, how much a day uh, should you take? What should you look for when you purchase CoQ10 if it is necessary? Uh, first, you want an organic form. Secondly, you don't want anything in it besides coenzyme Q10. In our office, we use... Uh, very, very f- uh, pharmaceutically uh, graded uh, s- supplements of, of coenzyme uh, Q10. Uh, I can't give you a manufacturer f- uh, because we haven't vetted them and they don't write uh, a check for Dr. Tom Rizal Live. If you ask me offline, you go to drtomrizal.com, uh, I may give you a suggestion that way. But coenzyme Q10 is necessary for many different functions in the body, and it's not just for an older person. If you're taking a statin, it dramatically depletes the heart of CoQ10, so the mitochondria begin to fail. What happens when they fail? You drop dead. That's one of the, the disasters of taking uh, uh, NSAIDs over a period of many years is that you go into cardiac failure. So a patient who's on statins, I will put them on quite high dosages of CoQ10, uh, up to, in some cases, uh, three, 400 milligrams a day and some people even more. But as a general rule, you know, somebody who's just trying to support their health, maybe 100 milligrams a day, but you have to be, you know, you want to make sure that you're advised properly. Organic only, you go to stores that uh, sell good products, you look for the best. When it comes to CoQ10, you're going to get what you pay for. If it's cheap, you got to probably have a cheap product because if a, a good CoQ10 product is available to you, it's not inexpensive. 
Um, I know that's not completely what you want to hear, but the guidelines are as we get older. I take CoQ10 every day, and sometimes I take up to 200 milligrams. Uh, I have no problems. I don't take any medications. I'm on nothing. Uh, my energy is good. I can keep pushing, pushing. Uh, so as a guideline, if you're going to take it organic, 100 milligrams a day shouldn't be a problem. There's really very little side effect at that level. Uh, but if you're on medications of any kind, you're depleting your mitochondria of its energetic uh, format, and you want to make sure that you take that. Lynn, I hope that helps you. Also, it's kind of funny bringing up the uh, make sure that it's by itself as well, too, because when you see CoQ10 added into products like, you know, heart healthy products and then kind of like the Centrum Silvers and they add something in there, you're talking about a dose that's like 5 to 10 milligrams, and we're Nothing. talking like you know, 100 to 300 that you were talking about. So really when you're seeing that in there, you're not getting anything that's going to really benefit the body in a long-term amount. No, and the medications from the statins to the aspirins to anything that's an NSAID, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, completely leeches the body of the this necessary uh, element. And it's it's a very critical piece. And if you find yourself getting older, uh, and your energy is not there, but you know it's not hormone related, like we're talking about right now. And that's that's the critical piece. We need to make sure that that's uh, that's taken care of. Nancy, calling from Tucson. Thank you. How uh, may we help you? Um, yes, I have a question. I um, I'm 51. I'm going to be 52, and I've been having really like heavy duty periods where I bleed a lot, so the gynecologist ended up doing a DNC on me. And then uh, I'm, when I get my period, it's I'm still bleeding a lot. And I know that I have heard that there is something natural that I could take that would help with the, with the bleeding process. I don't want to take hormones. Um, my mom has had cancer twice, so my gynecologist doesn't recommend me taking hormones. So I was hoping that there was something natural that I could take that would help out. Is there any history of fibroids? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, I don't have any fibroids. Do you mean in my family? Uh, well, it could be possibly they might be undiagnosed, but do you have it in the family? Uh, my mom has had like, um, she's had her, she had a hysterectomy. She had her ovary um, taken out. And yes, there was fibroids. Yeah. So there, there may possibly be fibroids that have been undiagnosed, and I'm not sure if your um, GYN has gone in there and done a uterine ultrasound where they can actually look, because that tends to basically think of fibroids as, you know, it's a mass that's in the uterus, and so you have more surface area. So every time you have a period, you're going to have more bleeding to begin with. Uh-huh. When we well, tend, said my uterus, I had a thick lining in my uterus. Mm-hmm. That's what they they determined when they went in there and they took um, biopsies of my uterus and everything was normal, Um, just that I had a thick lining of the uterus and she said it was pretty normal at my age to be going through this. Mm -hmm. Well, you can certainly see some transitional as you're going into perimenopause, but what I think is interesting is that with your mom having fibroids, having a thicker lining tends to tell me that, that the body's probably a little bit more receptive to the estrogen. And especially with having the breast cancer, you have to look at basically treating the having too much estrogen and not be able to process that versus trying to stop the bleeding itself. Why is the body producing that much blood? Is because it's getting the uterine lining is getting more signals to produce it. It's responding properly. But in the meantime, we have to look at trying things that are basically going to help with the estrogen metabolism so not as much of it is available to the uterine lining, and that will slow down the bleeding process. And the the other thing, Nancy, is that we go back to the hormone balance itself. If there's not enough progesterone and estrogen to uh, balance each other out adequately, you know, they're supposed to drop off at the same time. You're supposed to have your your menstrual cycle, and then you're supposed to stop. But there's also the possibility that the communication from your brain, the pituitary exactly, to stimulate is not being shut off the way it's supposed to and not being restarted the way it's supposed to, so you have other pieces. First step is to have uh, all your hormones checked, but not just blood supply, but saliva, because that's the active hormone, and then you can tell more from that. 
Uh, Nancy, I wish we could become, you know, m- much more in depth in this. It's, uh, you can get a hold of us at, uh, drtomrezell.com and, uh, send us a note and we'll be more than happy to, uh, give you a little bit more guidance and inf- uh, information. We're coming up to a break. Uh, my guest in studio, Dr. Stephanie Pina, your host this Wednesday evening at the Rizal Center for Healing, December 9th, 7.30 p.m. Call the office at 703-698-7117 to schedule and to reserve your seat. We'll be right back. Do you have frequent headaches, popping jaws, or constant earaches because of TMJ disorder? Hi, it's John Fredericks. TMJ disorder is extremely uncomfortable. If you're in pain, let me tell you about Dr. Michael Chung in Northern Virginia. With over 20 years' experience in neuromuscular dentistry, Dr. Michael Chung has successfully treated his patients with TMJ disorder. Don't live with TMJ pain. Learn more about your options by calling Dr. Michael Chung today. He'll treat your TMJ disorder and help relieve your pain. In fact, his beautiful practice is designed to soothe patients the moment they arrive. This place doesn't feel like a dentist office. It's more like a spa, warm and welcoming. If you call 703-319-6990 right now and mention The John Frederick Show, you'll receive a complimentary consultation. Just call 703-319-6990 or visit bestandsmile.com. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live right on the switch and the channel and the place that you listen to every week, every Sunday, same time, 12 o'clock Eastern. And wherever you happen to be, subtract or add the hours. We're here at 888-630-9625. That's 888 630 Nine six two five. Love to talk to you always. And if we're not here and you need to talk to one of the doctors at the Rizal Center for Healing, you can do what you're going to do now to register for Dr. Stephanie Pina's program on fertility and menopause. Call 703-698-7117, 703-698-7117. One of our doctors will get back to you. And if you'd like to contact me, do it by email. It's fast. I do respond, 703. No, no, don't do it that way. Go to drtomrozell.com. That's D R T O M R O S E L L E dot com, and I will write you back. I promise. We'll make sure that that uh, happens. But this Wednesday evening, we're going to be doing this program. And listen, guys, grab your your wives, your p- partner, your special person, and say, hey, listen. You know, I want to make sure that you're in good place, good state, and you're going to listen to one of our doctors who has. More to say about the subject from an accurate, objective point of view than probably anybody else you'll ever hear. Just call, make the reservation. Dr. Stephanie Pina will be your host, your presenter this Wednesday evening. And we'd love to have you, as always, as part of this presentation. Marsha, how can I help you? Yes, probably about four years ago, I started having a lot of problems with fatigue. And around that time, before I start my period, I get a really bad migraine like the day before, and then recently my fatigue's gotten worse and the migraines and the headaches have gotten worse during my period. And I didn't know if there's any... How how old are you, Marsha? 38. I would say right now, I mean, it's you're not exactly in like a perimenopause, menopause type of um, age range, but your hormones, especially during that time right before the period, shift quite a bit. I mean, that's what causes the period to kind of come on, is that that estrogen basically is not there anymore, and the progesterone just dropped because the body doesn't know it's it's not pregnant. So essentially, when we see migraines start to happen there, it's more of the systemic effect of what the hormones can do in other areas too, and whether that's creating more um, tension in, in the muscles itself, and so it's more of a musculoskeletal headache, or what you're also seeing is that the fatigue, especially associated with this, can be related to the fact that the adrenals can't support the estrogen progesterone balance either. Okay. Um, so, Marsha, I get, I have another question. Is the typical migraine? Does it feel like it's going through your eye and not through the back of your head? Well, usually, yeah. It's, but this past time was really weird because it was kind of like a tingling feeling, and then in my arm, kind of had like a tingling feeling. It was like the worst one I've ever had. Okay, so you know what it's doing is giving you a systemic effect through the body. Now you have to remember the cranial plates, the bones that make up your skull, move as you breathe in and out, 
and you know they help balance all the electromagnetic fields in the body. The reason I asked you the question I did originally, and uh, I kind of stole Dr. Pina's thunder to make me look good, but the the liver gallbladder are the the primary key elements in metabolizing hormone in the body. So if you've reached a place in your life where you've become exposed to so many other things and it's had to work over time, now you have a congestion problem that's taking place in the liver, and it's spilling off its into the gallbladder. The gallbladder uh, and the liver and every other organ system have energetic channels, and the, uh, the gallbladder channel starts at the eye, and it goes up over the head, and it goes down to the feet. And so That's why I asked you the question. In a typical migraine, a lot of people will complain that it feels like an ice pick through the eye, through the back of the head, and that's because of that gallbladder channel being overburdened by the hormones from the liver. And, you know, Dr. Pina is sitting here looking at me like I stole her, you know, Well, I did thunder. have a thermography, and it showed that my liver looked inflamed. So that gives you the, you know, the piece. Dr. Pina. I hate when you steal my thunder. I know. I had to. <laughs> Sorry. That's I, okay. I'll steal it good. back on Wednesday when I get to tell everybody about what we're going to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, but that's that's the deal. It's uh, it has to do with liver congestion. It has to do with a spillage over into the gallbladder channel, and that's why you've got the headache. So uh, that can be dealt with, and it can be effective. But you have to deal with the toxins that are associated with that. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Stephanie Pina will be your host, your presenter at the Results Center for Healing, and we'd love to have you as our guest. All you need to do is call 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to be there and you'd listen to information that will, I promise you, help you in every possible way. From fertility to menopause is the topic area. And also, go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Scroll down about a quarter of the page and look at GoFundMe site for our Children's Jubilee with our partnership with Caring for Others. Coming up to the end of the show, love you all. We'll see you next week, same place.
This is a recording of Dr. Tom Rosell for Sunday, December 6th, 2015. You can listen to this program live every Sunday afternoon from 12 noon to 1 p.m. right here on 105.9 FM and AM 630. WMAL. The following program is paid for by its sponsors who are solely responsible for its content. Views expressed on this program are not the views of 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. (laughs) 